Welcome floss tubers. Thank you for joining me on Thread the Needle. This is my second episode on floss tube. Uh, those of you who have never been here before, welcome. Those of you who are returning, thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to start first by saying um, thank you to all my subscribers. I was it was actually very overwhelming to see that what I was putting out there was um, enjoyable and that people really liked what they saw and you even commented and you left such wonderful comments and it was just really encouraging and so I'd like to say thank you to everyone. I guess now I'd like to start by uh, talking a little bit more about myself. Um, I'm married, I have been married for 20 years. Um, my husband and I have two wonderful children. They're both teenagers, they're 17 and 15 and um, they just started high school this year. Well, the uh, older one, he is in his last year of high school and my youngest is in her first year of high school. And, um, myself, I'm finding this whole thing of COVID has been a challenge. We are trying to look at the positive side and just take every day, one day at a time. Um, stitching helps a lot. Um, when I get to concentrate on my projects, it's just uh, my escape from the world. Here in Newfoundland, it is, uh, we're lucky, we're on an island, and we've able to keep most of the pandemic away. Like I said, schools are open now, so the kids are back to school. Everyone, uh, well not everyone, but most people are back to their workplace, and uh, some are still working from home. I guess it just depends on what type of job you have. I, myself, um, have been back to uh, work since uh, beginning of June when we entered phase two. So, um, like I said, I live in Newfoundland. It is a beautiful province. I will post some pictures here um, to show you. We have, uh, like I said, a beautiful province with so much to see and so much to do. We are primarily an outdoor province. A lot of the things that you can do here uh, summer or winter, whatever season, there is so much activity that can be done. Um, we have some beautiful walking trails, hiking trails called uh, East Coast Trails, which means that obviously they're on the east coast of the province, so it's just so beautiful. And uh, I can't say enough about it, but I will post a few pictures that uh, my husband and I have taken on our journeys this summer, especially because everything else was closed. You, we saw a lot of people out and about uh, trying to enjoy the weather at the same time staying away from everybody else with your uh, social distancing but uh, we got to enjoy the province a, a little bit more this summer and uh, you'll know that Newfoundland doesn't have the best of weather but this summer we were blessed with some pretty spectacular warm summer weather and um, boy did we take advantage of it. Um, there's so much to do here and I can't tell, wait to tell you more about um, my lovely province, but let's move on. So update number one, I said in my last video that I want to try something new when it comes to picking my projects. Um, I kind of go back and forth on how I decide my rotations. I never work on one project until it's done. Like you saw, I just have way too many projects that uh, take a long time to finish and if I were to wait until I finish a project to start another one uh, I'd probably never get there. So I do a lot of full coverage pieces. I haven't ventured very much into anything else um, but uh, that might change. Who knows? Uh, I'm open to any suggestions. Uh, I'm not keen on doing any of the specialty stitches. I prefer the full crosses. I'm okay if there's, you know, any simple stitches that uh, I have to learn, but I do prefer just the full crosses. Now, I thought in uh, the next little while I'm going to try a new way of picking my next project. Before I used to um, finish page on one project and then move on to the next. Just, you know, randomly pick whichever I want uh, or whichever one called out to me. Uh, whatever I was in the mood to stitch, be it uh, if I wanted to stitch on a little bit more confetti, work. Uh, for those of you who don't know, confetti in a piece just means that there is a lot of different colors in one uh, piece or one area and it just takes a lot of time and patience with confetti work. 
Um, or if I was in the mood, I'd pick something that had really big blocks of uh, stitching. So this time I tried something different. I downloaded an app. It's basically just a random wheel picker. You just press the button after entering all your projects on the wheel and it told me what to do. So the in the last two weeks, I did it a weekly. So I would do it from Sunday to Saturday. And the first project that the wheel landed on was my QS Peridot. So I'll show you just here um, what it looked like when I, uh, before I picked it up this last couple of weeks ago. And here it is. I'm happy to say that I have a page finish. Thank you very much. And so the project is actually now more than 50% complete and I couldn't be happier. So here she is. Don't mind the line here that's from my Q-snap that will my Q -snap that will come out with a good wash and an iron. But here she is in all her glory. I only have, uh, let's see how much further down. So I would say it would be about here. So these aren't full pages that will come here. They're actually just three quarter pages maybe. But um, I really enjoyed working on her. And in this one, I actually tried to do diagonal um, parking. Parking can be hit or miss with me. It depends on the project. Uh, sometimes if I get into it, then I will do it for a little while. And then before you know it, those threads will start to get on my nerves and I'll find myself just finishing them off and uh, going back to cross country. I find that I'm a very slow stitcher when it comes to parking. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's much neater and uh, you, you can be so much quicker when you park. I actually find that I am a much quicker stitcher if I uh, cross country. And there's some kind of satisfaction about finishing a color on a page. And a lot of people say that they will miss a stitch uh, when they do cross country and they'll, at the end of the page, they'll find all these ninja stitches. So ninja, ninja stitch is another term for um, a lone missed stitch. So when you park, you kind of avoid that because you're only doing a 10 by 10 block or a 20 by 20 block. And then if you were to miss a stitch, you'd obviously see it right away and, and go ahead and take care of it. However, with cross country, if you missed a stitch back in the beginning of the page and you cross country all the way, and then when you went back to check and you found this one lone stitch and you had to figure out what, what it was, where it was, what color it was, um, it can be uh, frustrating. Um, I found how I like to avoid that is I do a combination. Um, it's a version of parking and cross country, um, but not really. So I will cross country um, throughout the page. I'll start. Let's, let's, I'll show you how I do it with my next project. Actually, that might be an easier way. So after I finished Peridot, the wheel told me to stitch on uh, QS Christmas presents. So I'll show you where I was when I left it before and then when I was um, when it was selected for me I picked it up and I got quite a bit done uh, still not close to a page finish but not bad so uh, I think the line that I had stopped where the page was done was like right here so you can see the stitches are going there so with this you will see that um, if you look the columns obviously go down this way I will start in this top corner over here, pick a color, and however far my thread will take me, I will cross country stitch within the column all the way down, then I'll come back up. And that's how I'm able to um, get some good number of stitches in at the same time as avoid those page lines, which is why a lot of people like to, like to cross country. Uh, I did find I did get some lines whenever I did try to park. Um, I couldn't avoid it. Then I tried the diagonal and that actually helped a lot. So I found that I do like doing diagonal stitching when there's like um, a lot of just block stitching of one color, like in all this area here, where you don't really want any lines. And so with this one, I found that I can do my version of, I won't call it parking, it's 
cross country within columns. So then that way I can avoid those ninja stitches that if I'm stitching all the way down this column and I finish that one color, then I go on to the next. But then I notice that there is that ninja stitch. I can still catch it when I stitch that same color in the next column. So Pattern Keeper, um, I'm sure most of you know of it. It's an app that you can get for your Android tablet. And it is such a fantastic way of stitching. Um, instead of your paper and pen and trying to find your symbols on a chart, the Pattern Keeper is the stitcher's best friend. I love it. Uh, it's also very helpful for those ninja stitches. So that is how I like to stitch. And again, my mood will vary from project to project and I can be stitching on something. Like I said, I can start parking and then uh, my mood will change and I don't like to deal with those hanging threads, having to change the needle. I don't think I ever tried having them pre-threaded because having all those extra needles hanging around is a dangerous thing for me. Uh, I don't think is very dangerous for me. I don't think that would be a good idea to have too many needles. Um, I panic if I lose my one needle and I have to, um, I have to search for it right away. Otherwise, I know someone's going to get hurt. Um, so yeah, my mood will change with my stitching method based on the project and what kind of uh, work it requires. If it's um, a lot of confetti stitching, I do prefer cross country because I feel I'm much much faster. Uh, with the cross country on a piece. If it is a piece that has a lot of uh, one color and blocks and blocks of that color, I do really enjoy doing the diagonal stitching. Uh, it avoids the page lines and it avoids the monotony of it so that I can do just a diagonal column of 10 stitches across or 20 stitches across depending on what count I'm stitching in. And it's uh, super helpful. So those are the two projects that I just uh, worked on and I hope you liked the update that I had on them. Um, upcoming, we'll see what I'm gonna stitch. Um, we'll have to spin the wheel and see what comes up. I do have a shocker, non full coverage piece that I want to work on. I really enjoy working on mystery sales. The ones I've worked on in the past were run by Heaven and Earth Designs on their old bulletin board. Um, it was so much fun. Actually, a lot of the pieces that I have used to be uh, from that, I think I have some of them here with me. Um, actually, the only one I have at the moment is the Sunny. This one was a um, part of a mystery cell on the bulletin board, but unfortunately they don't run those anymore. Um, so I thought I would keep searching for something else. Uh, I found a couple that I think I might like to try. Um, I don't know how far I'll get into it. One is I found on Etsy. It's by Fuzzy Fox Designs. And it's a mystery sal, which is, you know, the concept that I like. And uh, it's Home for Christmas Stitch Along. So I've joined it. I have yet to start and I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm still very hesitant. I might give it a go just to have a little small project on the side along with all my full coverages. Um, I'm very hesitant because I've never done anything like that before and also I am quite a bit behind. I think they are maybe about five or six parts into the mystery style and if I don't get caught up and I see too much of it already on social media, then I'll lose my interest. So if I don't start right away, and then uh, we'll find out if I'll do it or not. So if I have something to show you next time, that means I started it and I'm going to give it a go and we'll see what happens. Now, uh, what else do I have to show you? Well, uh, I'm sure all of you know that uh, DMC came out with some new floss colors and I didn't get them at first. There was a big rush, everybody wanted to get them, and I thought, okay, I'll wait, I don't really need them right now. All my projects were fairly old or pre-new floss um, colors from DMC, so I thought, I'll wait and see what happens. And plus, I didn't know where would be a good place to get them from. Um, 
to be delivered here to me. Um, my local Michaels did not carry it. And so I was at a loss. I'd have to find somewhere online. And so I'd have to do a little bit more research about where I wanted to get them from. Then um, a new Michaels opened up in town and the new Michaels, I guess because they have so much new stock coming in and I was able to snag all of the new colors. And I actually went back a second time to get them uh, a second batch of them. Um, they're kind of nice. I do like them. Here they are right here. Oh, dropped one. Here they are right here. Let's see if I can get you a good shot. Hold them all at once. There you go. I don't know if you can see the fuchsias and there's purples and there's a bunch of colors. I think the first project that I have that might require them is my, um, my London piece. So we'll see how that goes. And there is another one uh, that might require some of the newer colors. And we'll see, we'll see if I need them, but I thought I should get them just in case. Um, I did have a couple of questions uh, in the comment section I wanted to address. Um, again, so th thank you for all the lovely comments. Um, some people wanted to know a little bit more about myself, and so I think I gave you a little bit more on that. Some people wanted to know my stitching method, and uh, some people wanted to know uh, how much time I put into my work. Now, that's a good question. Time spent on my projects. Um, these projects take a lot of time and effort. I'm not a slow stitcher, but I'm by no means a fast stitcher. I can, at the moment, I think if I manage to sit down for a couple of hours, I can manage uh, a few hundred stitches. Again, that depends on the project that I pick uh, to work on. And it also depends on if I'm uh, doing anything else at the time, if I'm watching TV and I have to concentrate on it, or if it's just something that's on in the background. Um, so it depends. Some projects I'll get uh, work done on them very fast. But most of the time, because I stitch at the end of the day when everything is done, all the... Um, work is done around the house, everyone has settled down for the night, they don't need me anymore. Uh, that's when I pick out my stitching and um, start going at it. So that's my way of stitching, that's how I stitch, that's when I stitch, that's how much I stitch. Um, I stitch because I love it and I hope you do too. If you have any more questions, please let me know. Uh, I'm always hunting for something to watch while I'm stitching, so if you have any suggestions, let me know. Thank you so much for joining me. It has been a pleasure to talk to you about my love for cross-stitch, and I hope you join me again next time. Thank you. Bye.